and with my mom. Uh, she lives in Canada. And she said something to me that was very scary. Because uh, Dr. Ephraim, you're talking about uh, let your food being your medicine and your medicine being your food. But uh, this conversation was very sobering to me because I was at work while I was talking to her because it was her birthday. And she was. Uh, it was late in the afternoon when I was talking to her. So I didn't get a chance to call her you know, like early. So she, she said, you at work today? And I said, um, yeah, I'm at work. She said, yeah, short, like we are over here, meaning short of um, nurses and healthcare staff. So I said, yes. So she said, oh, because of the shortage, they're closing a lot of emergency rooms over here. Mm -hmm. So I said, wow. So it dawned on me that if they're closing emergency rooms, it means that we are going to have to learn ways of keeping ourselves healthy and uh, out of those non-existent emergency rooms. Because where do you go if you can't go to the emergency room, if you are sick? We saw it in COVID where if you didn't have a condition, if you didn't have COVID, you couldn't get into the hospitals. All the doctors, closed their offices and went home and you had to order your medications like three months supply and whatnot. But then the pandemic lasted for way more than three months. So what do you do if you need something? So I'm saying all of this to say, it makes sense that we learn natural ways to take care of ourselves in case of those situations. Oh, that's, a, that's a very good point. Is there any other reason why we need to learn natural ways of taking care of ourselves? Yeah, so we don't have to uh, be subjected to the system. Wow. And according to the Bible in Revelation 13, those who trust and fear God, there's a time going to come when we will not be able to buy ourselves. That means we cannot participate in the economic systems of the world. Uh, we won't be able to go to the hospital to get any medication or to get any form of treatness, treatment. We won't be able to go to the drugstore unless we have the mark of the beast. Uh, but God will not leave us, um, leave us helpless. That's why we're going to learn some of these natural stuff right now to help us as we go through. So we hope you guys will be ready. Dr. Ephraim, you'll have to probably share your screen. I don't know. I am not host anymore. I'm host now. One minute. Let me see something. Your screen is up. Okay. See, my screen is up. All right. Okay. And this is a plan that we have here now that will show you uh, disease reversal. And it's very important that we know it. Everybody should know it by now. So we won't spend a lot of time. Jennifer, could you go? Could you, um, Dr. Ephraim, go through that? Yes. God's plan for disease prevention and reversal. Disease is an effort of nature to free, free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. That's All right, stop right there, stop there, stop there. So disease, what, what you could say diabetes, you could say hypertension or high cholesterol, is an effort of nature to free our system from conditions that result from a, re from a violation of the laws of health. You guys know what the laws of health are. So if you feel a headache, arthritic pain or anything, ask yourself the question, which laws of health am I violating? Everybody have to learn to do it for themselves. And then after you ask yourself the question, you find out what's the next step. In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained. All right. Uh, why, why am I diabetic? Why am I hypertensive? Why am I uh, suffering from headache? You know, these are the cause. We must uh, find them. To ascertain some things mean to um, thoroughly search it out. And what are the other two conditions, Dr. Ephraim? Two steps. You know, unhelpful conditions should be changed and wrong habits corrected. If we realize... If we realize what laws we are violating, mm -hmm. we have to correct it by start putting those laws into practice to correct what um, situation we're going through. 
And I can speak for myself one day, didn't get to rest on time to go to bed between nine and 9.30. And my head was just feeling so funny. It wasn't a headache, headache, but, and I went outside walking and I just started taking some deep breaths, deep breaths. And eventually that uncomfortable feeling that I was experiencing in my head went away. And I'm saying that to say that when we are violating these laws, we are bringing some of these things on ourselves. So we have to actually find out what's the cause, make the changes so that we can correct those habits that we are practicing that are not very good. And, and this is how nature is going to be assisted in her effort to expel the impurities and to reestablish right conditions within the system. Wow, me too. I find that if I just eat a health, a, a, a good lunch or, or whatever and lie down, then I'm going to have upset stomach and when we perch and I'm belching because bel I know that when I finish eat, uh, we were counseled to go and get a little walk, right? But um, when you violate those laws, then sickness come. And what we try to do now is to find some remedies to cure them rather than remove the cause. Wow. Unhealthful conditions should be changed. For example, if uh, if you're a diabetic and you're wearing socks that are too tight, you know, that's going to restrict your blood flow and it could um, create some circulation problems in, in your feet. Just the same way. And ladies and guys who have your, um, your, your, your who have your, your tummy section here too, um, too tight, you know, those girdles and those short pants freeze you up. That's not good for your circulation neither. Perfect health equal perfect circulation. So there are many little things that we have to think about. Anybody can think about anything else before we go to the next step? And Pastor, <laughs> just as you mentioned there about the tight clothing, we have to mm. remember that when we're doing that, we're causing blood to pool or collect in an area in the abdomen and also the hormones. And we are, we are not even aware that apart from circulation issues, this too can cause us to have fibroids as women when we're wearing all these tight things because hmm. we are causing everything to accumulate. Yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting, you know. But can I and say I, this thing too, Pastor? Oh, oh, for any time you can come. Anybody can jump in any time. We, we want, want to, to be helped. Mm -hmm. But I just want to mention you? this because Isaiah 4 verse 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So a lack of knowledge based on truth is accountable for a lot of illnesses to disease because people are not knowing their body are not knowing their selves are taking time out to read for themselves or research for themselves. So this is where this coming where lack of knowledge are destroying God's people by causing sicknesses and disease and so forth. So we need to educate and ourselves. Sure. And you know, um, Jennifer, uh, when, when I just started this um, health and healing program, I used to believe that, you know, the only way we would be healed is to get direct healing. Uh, but I have come to realize that one of the most important thing that God can do for us to help heal us is to give us wisdom. So we know where we are going wrong and then correct it and when we know where we're going wrong and we correct it you know what happened healing takes place because if god heals us directly every time we pray for that then we'll go back and we'll be doing the wrong stuff and what will that be doing bringing unhealth bringing sickness and disease again so 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 wisdom is very important wisdom is a principal thing they forget wisdom and in all that getting get understanding mm -hmm. I remember um, someone was really, really suffering from serious bowel problems, bowel problems. And, and um, she went to a GI doctor, do an upper and a lower um, GI tract test and all them stuff there. But nothing was, nothing was wrong down there, according to them. It was no irritable bowel syndrome the person was having. Uh, they were listening to a lecture and uh, the lecture was talking about um, 
um, celiac disease and uh, celiac disease and allergy to certain food, being allergic to certain food. Only come to notice that what was creating this problem, that person was um, allergic to weed problems, P weed products, sorry, weed products. And that person was a vegetarian. So, you know, they had a lot of heat, um, a weed products. So when, which is difficult for a vegetarian to do when you stop eat, you have to stop eat these things for a while. And when she stopped eating them, the, the thing go away. So again, that's what I'm saying, we need wisdom. So I don't know if anybody here is struggling, struggling from some uh, tough, hard condition this evening. You need to pray for God to give you wisdom to help you to uh, reverse the condition or prevent the condition. Now, after all these three steps are done, what's the next one, Dr. Ephraim, number four? Then nature is to be assisted in her efforts to expel impurities and to reestablish right conditions in the system. What does that mean? <laughs> we can only assist nature by doing the things that we're supposed to be doing, practicing the laws of health. And that's how we're going to reestablish the right conditions in our bodies, in our system. You see, God tells us in his word that if we, um, if we are obedient to his word and we follow his commandments and his statutes, that he put none of these diseases upon us because he's God that he let us. So when we're doing our own thing and being disobedient to the laws of nature, which are the laws of health, or even violation of his spiritual laws, his commandments, we are bringing these conditions upon ourselves by violating those laws. Right. Then she says, now nature is to be assisted in our effort. This is where natural remedies come in. That's the fourth step. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're gonna talk about this evening. I know a lot of people like to go to natural remedies, but it's a fourth step in the, heal in the healing of disease, right? Pastor. Right. Yes. Uh, like uh, I, I, I was saying, in the health industry, we tend to skip all the three steps, the first three steps. Yes. And then we go right to the fourth step. And my thing is, if you want to remove the symptom, then remove what is causing the symptom. In the healthcare world, we tend to treat the symptoms and you send you back home and we never tell you um, most times how to remove the cause. You know, as the, the, the conversation went to something like that yesterday, because in the hospital system, they serve shrimp, we serve oxtails, but then Right after that, that sugary we, stuff you serve in there. My God. Yeah, you pop your two lipiters, you know, and say, okay, that's for your cholesterol. But if you never gave me the shrimp and you never gave me the oxtail, maybe my cholesterol would not have been high in the first yeah. place, you know? Thank you very much. It's a very good illustration. We have to be careful that in the naturopathic way, we don't do the same thing, you know? We don't just jump to number four because number four is like the it's like it's a temporary relief you'll get most of the time unless you deal with the first three. So let's move on. And then now, uh, before they gave them like natural foods for them to go and eat, they gave them a pill, let them pop a pill. Because like for the cholesterol, the same grapefruit also is good for cholesterol. So if they eat two grapefruits a day, it will help lower their cholesterol. So they're not encouraging them and they need to know that the fundamental principle of true healing consists of the return to natural habits of living, which is natural remedies. But right. Sister Jennifer, they will tell you that if you're on blood pressure pills to stay off grapefruit. So you'll not find them serving you grapefruit because that is contraindicated for the medications. Now, if you want to lower your blood pressure, instead of taking the pill, you should take the grapefruit. But they're not going to tell you that. <laughs> great because they, they, there's, there's no money in that. <laughs> uh, we can't tell them that. Well, continue. This system is um is freezing. Continue. I'm just trying to get it. 
We can't see anything now. Do you want me to share? One second there. I know you can't see because uh, my system is, I don't know what's happening. Okay. It's not moving. You're probably going to have to share. Let me see. I'm unable to share. Your co-host? We can see your screen. Oh, oh no, she's not co-host. Co-host, sir, Dr. Um, Pastor Daly. All right, go on. Let's try to share now. No, you have to co-host, sir. She's not co-host as yet. Okay. Well, I don't know what natural remedies computer need this evening. <laughs> Act it up. Okay. I tell you. Someone asked in the chat, what should you take instead of blood pressure pill? Okay. There you said it already, Donna Lee. Yeah. Okay, so God miracles do not always bear out semblance of miracles. Natural means used in accordance with God's will, brings about supernatural results. We ask for a miracle and the Lord directs the mind to some simple remedy. And this was taken from Second Selected Messages, page 346. And it's from Ellen G. White. So, you know, many times again, pe persons become sick and they want a miracle, right? But we have to also remember that sometimes we're sick for three reasons. To bring glory to God or because of those violations. So when we pray for the miracle and want to see you know, God heal. Sometimes the healing is not going to come right away because God knows that if he heals us, that we're going to go back to our old habits, eat the things that are not good for us. And instead of glory going to God, it's going to the enemy because we're going, we get the healing and we go right back to those things. So move on. So the natural means now should be used in accordance with God's will. That is what will bring about the supernatural results. We ask for a miracle and the Lord directs the mind to some simple remedies. Now, some of us, we love quick fixes because we live in this type of society where we think that everything should happen like a microwave, quick, fast, in a hurry. Natural remedies do not happen overnight in terms of healing. It takes a while. It's not going to be like the drugs and drugs do not heal, okay? They mask the symptom and it comes back somewhere else or something else, True. right? So we have to remember that natural remedies, they are going to take a little while. Now we have the story in the Bible of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah in 2 Kings um, chapter 20, we could actually see the story of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was basically sick, sick unto death. And he prayed, he cried out to God. And God heard his prayer and answered him. He did not want to die. He was crying out and God heard him. And he was, the prophet um, told him that he was told to put figs because he was sick. He had boils. That was his infirmity. He had boils on his body. And he was told to put figs on his boils to get healing. And God promised him an additional 15 years of life. So when the Lord told Hezekiah that he would spare his life for 15 years, and as a sign that he would fulfill his promise, cause the sun to go back 10 degrees, why did he not put his direct restoring power upon the king? 
He's God, he could have done that. But instead, he told him to apply a bunch of figs to his soul. And that natural remedy, blessed by God, healed him. The God of nature directs human agents to use natural remedies now. Amen. So, so you see there, um, um, I don't know if, um, if, 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 if Hezekiah the king, he had the best medical advice, right? Uh, advisors. Uh, it's like the president of the United States of America, they would have been the top scientists in their camp. Uh, and then Hezekiah had that too, but uh, he was dying from the terminal condition and they couldn't heal him. And look what God said, figs. All right, go on, tell us a little more about figs, guys. Let us know what's so powerful about figs. Are they still as powerful today? Let's just go on, Dr. Ephraim, share some things about, we learn about what, what figs are. One of the things that I would say about figs, because especially Could you bring up the next slide? Them. Could you bring up the next slide? Yes. Now, figs used internally can relieve constipation, low blood pressure. It's good for anemia, gout, and skin diseases. It's also when used um, externally, it's good for inflamed boils, abscesses, pain, and scar tissue. It's rich in vitamins A, B, C, calcium, and phosphorus. And I'm going to tell you a little story about abscesses. I had a cousin who was born and she had this little abscess in the chest area. And doctors did surgery. They stabbed it about twice and claimed that, you know, they take out whatever. And it just kept coming back. And my mother decided to go through the natural remedy, the old way, and decided she's going to use fig. And she's going to get some turpentine from the, the turpentine tree. That's the tree home where you could just scrape the bark and it brings out this gooey thing like a sap and put it on it and put on it and warm she actually warmed the um the the fig and put it on there and that thing took out that abscess and that was when it finally healed a hard thing came out of it like the size of a black ip but it looked like a chicken fat and hard and it came out and that was when it healed so we can see that externally, you know, the fig actually um, work on these things. I don't know if anyone else had any experience with fig. And for those of us in the Caribbean, please, because I know home we would say fig and we actually talking about a green banana. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the real fig. Um, I have heard um, testimonies uh, of this lady who had breast cancer. And uh, she used the figs, you know, you make it into, um, into a paste and put some blood root on it and put it on the breast. And then uh, whatever was going on in the breast, it disappeared. Yeah, yes, Donnelly, this is what they use a lot in wellness centers for people who have, for ladies who have breast cancer. Because yeah. remember, it, is, it was a boil that, um, a sore that um, Hezekiah had. So the, the properties in the figs still uh, are valuable today. All right, let's move on. See what else we learn about. Yeah, so here is a picture the of the fig on the tree. Mm. So how to make a poultice, and Donnelly just mentioned one. So what we can actually- What do you mean by the word poultice? For those who probably don't know, what, what is a poultice? What do you mean by the word poultice, you know? It's when we mix a paste, whether we add water or whether we add an oil or whatever, when we make a paste, it's actually what we call a poultice. You put water to some other um, type of um, product and you, you make it into a paste. And that is what we call a poultice that you can apply to whatever it is you're trying to um, heal. Yeah, and most of the things, if they are messy stuff, uh, or if they mark your skin, like if you're making something like a charcoal poultice, you don't want to put it directly on the skin. So you wrap it 
between, you know, like a paper, two paper towels or a piece of um, two pieces of gauze or a piece of calico or something. And then you apply it to your skin and then you wrap it around mm -hmm. and leave it overnight or for the prescribed time. All right, thank you. So let's go on and tell us how you make the fig poultice. So now with the poultice, first we're going to get some liquid, some water in a container. And the agent is going to be the cayenne pepper. Now, this is the cayenne pepper that we use that has at least 90,000 international heat unit. And then you pour the small amount of water and make it into a paste because you don't want it to be, um, you know, too, too, too runny or too um, thick. So you just make it just right. So you're just gonna be adding the water until you get the right consistency of the paste. Then you're gonna put that paste on cloth and place it on the area. Then you use um, plastic to hold it in place. So you're gonna wrap plastic around it to keep it in place. And you, whether it's overnight or for a couple of hours, whatever is the recommendation. The plastic could be a saran wrap, piece of saran wrap. Uh, when you say plastic to hold it in place, you see, can you imagine if you are not um, in a developed place, you could use this, right? Right, guys? <laughs> yeah, you have figs. You yeah, could you use could, this? You could also use like any clear plastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you don't have saran wrap, because some of these things tend to be expensive in other places too. Yeah. And you want to also put the saran wrap because when it starts pulling out whatever is going on inside, it could be pus, it could be some kind of liquid that's inside, it can stay in your bed linen and whatever else you might have, you, you might put it on. So that's why you want to wrap it around with the plastic yeah. as well. That may sound so unscientific. Let's go, but not yet, not yet. That may so, sound so unscientific, right? But remember now, simple means used in accordance with God's will, will produce supernatural results. Always keep that in mind. You are working in harmony uh, with God and God is supplying uh, the healing that you need. Now, before we go to the next um, one, Dr. E, there was a conversation going on in the chat about about this blood pressure thing. Jennifer, I think you should clear it up. And I make sure I put a disclaimer first inside here because we don't know how high your blood pressure is. So we cannot give you, um, you know, you need a consultation if you travel with high blood pressure and stuff. So we are just telling you that people who think we're not even on medication and they want to maintain our, you know, their blood pressure, instead of going on pills, they can try grapefruit, and or garlic tea, it does work to help maintain your blood pressure. But if you are already on blood pressure medication, you're not supposed to take um, eat grapefruit because, as uh, Sister Donnelly says, also it contradicts the medication that you're taking. So, as I said, if you're already on blood pressure meds, you have to follow what your doctor says. Okay, but if you, once he you took your blood pressure meds, you can maintain it with grapefruit. But if you're already on um, blood pressure medication, I would suggest that you continue follow your doctor's advice until you're off of it, then you can uh, maintain it with natural, eating natural remedy fruits like grapefruit or drink your garlic tea. And as I said, if you want to go and do it, make sure you take your blood pressure before and after so you know how it is working for you. Okay, uh, so remember the grapefruit, is part of the prevention process and the treatment. So we have, remember, we have to practice our exercise, our change our diet. We have to do the lifestyle change first. Mm -hmm. And then that is part of nature assisting us to help us combat our issue. Uh, Sister Charlene Daly hands is up. She's good at, um, she's good at blood pressure <laughs> medication. So. You can go ahead and speak, Sister Daly. Maybe she has a testimony. Oh, yes. She I does, too. Pressure medication. Go ahead, Sister Daly. I got off my blood pressure medication as a result of using natural things. But I wanted to share that 
the reason that you can't use the grapefruit is not that the grapefruit is bad for the blood pressure, but grapefruit is gonna pull the blood pressure numbers down. So if you're taking blood pressure medication and you're using the grapefruit, your blood pressure may go too low. And that's what the doctors fear. So you would have to work with your physician, monitor your blood pressure while you're doing the grapefruit because the grapefruit will do the same thing as the medication and it will probably push you too far down. Uh, something else we do, we, we definitely don't tell anyone to get off their medication. We did a disclaimer at the beginning of the program, but just in case you're joining us a little late, I like to highlight this. So you know we're not telling folks to get off their medication. We never do, never will do. But we're educating you so you can make the educated decision, make the educated decision that you need to make for your better health. Uh, when I started taking natural supplements, I did not know that it would affect my blood pressure positively. And that is since 2003. I used to take Norvas. And even while taking the Norvas, I noticed that my blood pressure was still going up. I would go to the doctor and he says, you gotta come back in two weeks time. And then after a while, he wanted me to come back every week because the blood pressure wasn't controlled. And I thought he was getting ready either to add another blood pressure medication or increase the dose. And right about then, the good Lord came through with something natural and just taking natural supplements and including natural lifestyle changes, the walking, the water, the resting and all of that. Since 2003, I've not had to go back on blood pressure medication. And when I check my blood pressure, when I go to the doctor and they check it, it's within normal range. And I'm giving God thanks for that. Amen. But you know, sometimes we are, we tend to be impatient when we're taking the natural remedies. Here we are, we're on blood pressure pills for 10, 15 years. And as soon as we start using the natural remedies, we want results like in two days. You have to, uh, we have to understand that we have to be patient sometimes. Some things work right away, others take a little time. But the important thing is that we remain consistent. Amen. So what other natural remedies do you have up your sleeve, dear Dr. Ephraim? You want to share this evening? We're going to speak a little bit on onions. We can use onions in our home and even garlic, even though they have that strong pungent smell. They are very good in terms of being antibacterial and antiviral. They provide good benefits in those areas. And they will also help to purify the air in your room. If you have someone that suffer with, let's say, cold, allergies, sinuses, it's good to have the cut onion. See the onion there cut in water or you can put it plain. It's up to you if you can stand it like that. And you put it in the room and it helps. It helps with breathing. It helps because the onion attracts whatever virus or whatever is there, it will be attracted to the onion. And the onion will help to keep the air in the room pure. Also, if you're in a place where it is moist and you may have mold spores flying around that you can't see with the naked eye, it would also attach itself to the onion and you would see it. So you would know that there is mold in your home mm -hmm. and that you need to do something about that because having mold is not healthy at all. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little more about that, about that fellow. Onion, I know there's some more things there. Also, it is very good for ear ache. I can speak about my nephew so much so that he knows how to do it himself and he would cut the half of onion and put on his ears as well and squeeze a little juice into the ear. So what you would do is that you would steam one whole onion, you slice the onion in half and you squeeze just two drops into your ear. And you place half of the same onion over the air, and then you cover the onion with a cloth so that it can hold in place for several hours. And my nephew would do it as a joke, put the cloth and tie it <laughs> as a bow on top of his head and laughing like him, well, it's so funny. But he said it works for him. And that's why, you know, if he has an ache, he would go and do it. Well, wonderful. Guys, remember you can, um, uh, you can link the link 
uh, send somebody else on, whether on your Facebook page or on your WhatsApp or your text or whatever, I call them because we have a few more um, to share with you. Continue. Ooh. And if there is anyone in the audience who have used any of these remedies or have any experience with any of these remedies, you you can you know raise your hand and we will allow, allow you to share as well. Also, onion can use as a poultice also for babies if they're having congestion, not breathing properly. You can bake it and then you mash it and put it in either in a a pillowcase, but not exactly on the baby's skin. Put it on a pillowcase and then put it on the baby's skin, on the baby chest, sorry, and let it stay, wrap it around, and it will help relieve the congestion. I've used it um, for my son one day. He came home and he had this rattling cough on his chest and we were able to blend it up, put it in a cloth and wrap it around his chest. Uh, we did a, a, another thing, you can juice it, put some honey in it, put some eucalyptus and have them take it uh, orally as a, a cough syrup. And also if you're having an asthma attack, you can bite into an onion and it will help to avert the attack. Okay, Sister Hilton, you can unmute. Yeah, um, onion is very good. It's also good for sore throat. I have a lady at my church, but even brothers and sisters, happy Sabbath. Uh, she was on her second round of antibiotics. She said, I don't know what to do with this earache. It's not helping. I've, got been, I've been taking um, antibiotic and it's my second round. I don't want to. So I said, okay, I'm going to tell you something you might not want to do, but try it for the fun of it. And the following Sabbath, she came to church. She said, Sister Hilton, it works. My earache is gone. So personally, I have a personal testimony. And of course, sore throat, it is get good for sore throat too. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Part of it, how is it used for sore throat? Huh? How is it used for sore throat? Well, how do you go about using the onion? You eat it or you wrap it around the throat? No, I put, it in a, <laughs> uh, I put it in a cheesecloth or paper towel, slice it, and I put, um, put it microwave it for a little while, just nice, not too warm, and I put it on, but that is my go-to when I'm having a sore throat. Very good. Work. Very good. Also, you can put it under your soles or as um, Caribbean yeah. people would say, your foot bottom. Yes, and the sole of your feet. Yes, it does work yes. too. Yes, it will help to pull out those impurities, especially if you have a fever. Okay, Dr. Ephraim, next slide. Oh, you, you, uh, you confirm what my sister here was saying about the sore throat. Beautiful. Yes. Okay, so if a person really just want to know, you place sliced onions in the center of the cloth, you fold from edges to center, because remember now we, we can't put these things directly on the skin. So you place the covered onion over the chest or the throat and you tape it in place for several hours, or you can use plastic wrap, whatever you, you're comfortable with to hold it in place, okay? You know, and um, the amazing thing I'm here thinking, how much money do um, do the do these natural remedies cost us? So like the onion, how much you have to pay for that? <laughs> Eighty nine cents for a bag. Not anymore. <laughs> anymore, it's two ninety nine for three dollars. <laughs> well, it could be eighty nine cents in Pennsylvania. We don't know. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know. We all buying all onions for them kind of money. <laughs> Wow, but, but that's the thing I'm here pondering. Look how simple it is. It's not complicated and um, and you get relief from it. Debo Deborah Hill has her hand up. She could unmute, unmute yourself. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Can you hear, oh, you can hear me. Hi, Dr. Daly. Hello. Recently, I saw a video about the onion peel. Because remember, we buy the onions and we throw away the peel. Mm -hmm. And it said something about if you boil it as tea, 
and drink it is is a sleeping aid because sometimes I have problems sleeping. So I said, hmm, let me just try it and see. I made the tea. I was and I put it by my bed before I got comfortable and ready to go to bed. And I thought I was going to read something because that's usually how I fall asleep sometimes. I didn't even finish the whole cup of tea. I drank half of it and I didn't wake up until the next morning about 5:30. Amen. But the thing Amen. about using the peel, you have to if you're on blood pressure medicine, you have to monitor it and be careful. You can't overuse it because it will tend to lower your blood pressure as well. So I'm, I'm the living proof that it does work. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen, thank you. It's good for hazma too, you know. And the peel is also good for hair dye. If you boil it and wash your yes. hair with it. Yes. yes. Oh. Let's move on. Okay, so we have treating a sore throat, you can apply a compress to your throat as well. You wet a rag with cold water, just place it against the throat, wrap a plastic over the rag around the throat, wrap a dry length of cloth over the plastic around the throat and you keep on overnight or several hours. Yes. And can I can tell you, this. Take a it picture works. of this folks with your, with your um, cell phone. Sorry, go on. I have actually tried this myself. And it works because there are times because I'm continuously speaking, speaking all the time, my throat would get um, scratchy. And I actually tried this. And what I find the cold water would have your own body temperature, just make everything get warm and nice. And when you get up in the morning, it's like your throat is brand new. No scratchiness, no nothing at all. Uh, Sister Jennifer, somebody in the chat is asking uh, what is good for a hair dye? Uh, and I think she was talking about when you mentioned onion peel. Do you want to elaborate on how we actually use that to make uh, a hair dye? You boil it as in tea, maybe a cup. You boil it as in tea, and then you saturate your hair. You wash your hair, and then you saturate it with it and let it stay maybe for 45 minutes. And um, it changes it change, change your ear color. Some people have red ear. It changes it to darker red and so forth. Oh, so it's the red one we're talking about. No, it changed different ear colors. Good for uh, grays, I understand too. Grays and stuff. It's like um, just like oh, you heard about the the enia, enna, henna. The, right. That's how you can use the the um the onion peels also. You know, because rosemary does the same. When you thing, boil yeah. it, it changes. Yeah, it changes color after you boil it, and then you saturate your hair with it. Your clean hair. Make sure all the grease come out of it and stuff, and then you let it sit with a cap on for 45 minutes and it turns a different shade. And that is double benefit because uh, I was reading that many times when we people have alopecia mm. or things that will just inflame the scalp, uh, it's because the scalp is inflamed. So the onion would provide a double benefit because it is an antiseptic as well. And uh, um, rosemary tea does the same thing with the hair color. And this was mentioned before, because um, Sister Donnelly mentioned this about the cough syrup with the onions. Mm. So in a jar, you place one layer of sliced onion, next place one layer of honey, repeat until the jar is full. You can add garlic or ginger, let it sit overnight, refrigerate and use one tablespoon three times a day, and it's good for cough. I do it the old fashioned way from um, back to Eden and um, Ellen G. White, where she says you cut, cut the whole onion, slice it up and you cover it with honey in a pot on the stove. You don't let it boil, but you let it simmer and then you let it cool and you put it in the glass jar and put it in your refrigerator and you take a tablespoon for a cough. And if you add some food grade eucalyptus oil to it, it's even more effective. Or some um, horseradish, or and some horseradish. Yeah. What's the difference between this and the cough syrups that we buy over counter, Danny? They have alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> they put you to sleep as well because they're so strong. Okay. 
and then have a lot of other additives. And so, fillers. Yeah, so this is uh, God's natural way of helping us with our cough if we should have one. That's beautiful, all right. What, this is what so many things on hand can be used for? One. Oh, wait a second. Onion two, um, I forgot. Onion two, if uh, the guys have, uh, what's that? U urinary retention or mm -hmm. some type of inflammation going on in the groin area or the prostate or whatever, you can just use the onion to rub in that area or drink the onion juice or and. Either or, or you do both and it helps with um, helping them to pass urine, clear up the infection and whatever is going on in that department. Praise okay, God for the onion. We're gonna have more respect for the onion now. Angela said it can purify the ear. That was one of the first thing we said, right, earlier on. Okay, and we know that since COVID came about, we have heard so much about the flu bomb, but not everyone can take the flu bomb. The stomach cannot tolerate it. So we also have the flu bomb tea, where you bring to um, 15 minutes boil, one medium onion, four cloves of garlic, one inch of ginger, add half lemon and honey to taste and two cups of water, no sugar. Now, I have been doing this for years, winter time. And I can tell you it works because I don't get no cold, no cough, no nothing, thank God. And what I do, I just prepare it winter time and use it. So it can so is it, can we use it this winter too? <laughs> yes, it's a it's a way of you know preventing you from catching cold and other viruses, other things that are out there, coughs and so on and so forth. So, oh, so and I've been so, doing this for years. Okay, so it can be preventative as well as curative. It seems yeah. that's what you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. So, folks, it's right there. Take a picture of it. And there are so many viruses that are being released in the air today that I don't know. When it's, it's, it's never ending. So we have to um, strengthen our own resistance if we're going to really make it. All right. What else do you have to share with us? And let me just say if you're diabetic, please do not add the honey. Okay. But that's what we like. That's what diabetics like most. You see? <laughs> okay, so. um, uh, Dr. Sylvia, uh, there are some things in the chat. I can't see the chat. Okay, Sister Mimi, I think I used to, I used to have colds at least three to four times a year. I started placing an onion in every room in my house, and mm -hmm. for six years now, I haven't had a cold. Wow. Amen. The power of the onion. Amen. Purifies the air, as the lady said. Mm -hmm. And also, if you have anyone in your family who has a fever, if you put it on their nightstand on a saucer, it will draw away the fever from them. Mm -hmm. There are the properties of this onion that make it so powerful. Does anyone know? It's antiviral, is anti. Bacterial as well. Antibacterial, it has so many medicinal properties in it. Yeah. Just um, like garlic. I, I was reading, I think, where it has some thing called Allison in it. Uh, I didn't delve into the whole story of Allison, but Allison is a property that is in garlic as well mm -hmm. for, anti for antibacterial. And um, it's so powerful that it can treat a, a something that we, okay, often we use a very, very powerful antibiotic called vancomycin at the hospital. When you see somebody getting vancomycin, they have something serious. <laughs> and uh, and uh, there's a condition called MRSA, which is a flesh eating um, bacteria. Mm -hmm. And they use it for that. 
this this alisal because there's a concentration uh, of garlic that is called the name alisal and they use it mm -hmm. for that. So it's really powerful stuff. And they said the onions have the same properties as the garlic where infections are concerned. Wow. Now, Jennifer, uh, there are two people in the chat that are asking about the presentation. Mm -hmm. One wants the presentation and other is um, inquiring how they can get the, uh, the video. So okay. um, tell them then, remember, folks, we're trying to form a healing of the nation's commun committee, community, sorry. So um, we have something, we have a, a survey, is a survey you call it, or a form in the chat. It's a form they uh, can fill out. They can fill out if you want to be a member of this. So um, we will send you know these special presentations. You realize that they take time and effort to put together. We love what we're doing. We work hard at it. And uh, we would like you to become an arm of um, the Healing of the Nation, an ambassador. So, so please put this stuff there, Jennifer, even if it was there before, the it's, form for people to fill out and then you could request. It's there um, also. And they can text or call the 646 number with your email address if you're texting so that it can send to you also. Yeah, okay. What's the 646 number? We haven't mentioned it. 646-400-5720. It's in the chat also. Okay. But we'd really like you to be a part of this um, Heal of the Nation. Some of you out there too can do some presentations. So if, if, if you have a good presentation, uh, you can let us know. We'll interview you and uh, we'll let you come and share with the group. Okay, um, we have... Huh? We have a, a, another thing um, in the chat, something about garlic. Sister King says, let's remember that garlic was the first anesthesia used successfully prior to someone having surgery. Okay. She's so somebody I, who could be one of our presenters too. You've been on every week, welcome. And uh, you seem to be very knowledgeable. Mm. All right, move on. Okay, we're looking at a persistent cough. And as um, Sister Donnelly mentioned, eucalyptus. And the eucalyptus is anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiseptic, and it strengthens the immune system. It's very good for nasal congestion, bronchitis, sinusitis, and it's also a muscle relaxer. Mm, God loves the eucalyptus. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Now, what remedy would we recommend if we're treating that persistent cough? Second Selective Messages, page 301, tells us that one cup boiled honey, we could add a few drops of eucalyptus oil and take one teaspoon every two hours. Okay, so if we have that persistent cough, that's the recommendation. So what if I'm diabetic? And if you're diabetic, we would say, you know, stay away from the, the honey. We would not use um, honey. So we would actually have to give um, that person another remedy where we don't use the honey. Instead of honey, they can use, use beet, uh, not beet, sorry, date syrup. It's um, less calories and less sweeter than honey, but it's, it's full of other um, properties. It's, it's, it's time syrup. released as well. Yes. And it has more fiber. Yes, that too, thank you. <laughs> so along with that, we can also use a warm foot bath with the eucalyptus leaves in it to help us with the cough. Where do we get eucalyptus from? Oh, it's funny you should ask that because I was going to bring that up because it tends to be expensive in some places. But if you see, like in the Bronx, you see the Spanish people, they have it on the food trucks. Uh, I, I forgot what they call it, but it's very cheap. They have it like for a dollar for a bag and you get a nice, like a sandwich bag full of eucalyptus leaves for a dollar. Well, not everybody will go to the Bronx, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure that in the Spanish community, yeah, if you buy it from the Spanish people, it's very cheap. I'm sure there's a Spanish population in everybody's surroundings. 
Yes. Or you could go to the health food store and get the eucalyptus oil, right? Or order it online. Also, the oh, Amish no. stores, the Amish people carries it as well. And also remember that you need for, for to make the cough syrup, you need a food grade one because there's a therapeutic grade and say. there's a food grade one. So if you want to ingest it, it's best to get the food grade one or the one that says dietary supplement. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're looking to get rid of a cold to abort a cold, right? We can begin by taking immune building herbs during cold or flu seasons when you have been exposed to a virus or when your immune system has been compromised. So we can take things like echinacea, golden seal, and garlic. And these would help to build our immune system and to protect us. So we don't have to wait until we get the cold to treat the cold, but protect ourselves during the cold or flu season time. And still remember that we're still in the COVID season. So make sure you're taking all your vitamin C's and keep your immunity well jacked up high because COVID is still here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, echinacea will help to stimulate the phagocytes, release inter interferon to fight diseases. So this is how it will help your immune system. It activates the natural killer cells and the T lymphocytes in our white blood cells, and it will shorten any viral illness. But please don't take it if you have an allergic reaction to daisies. Use with caution if you also have autoimmune diseases. The golden seal, this is a very mild antibiotic mucous membrane tonic, it's anti-inflammatory properties when applied locally, excellent for leg ulcers, combats infectious diarrhea and parasites as well. And also with the golden seal, you're to take it, do not take it um, like two weeks straight, you have to give it a break because as you know, if the doctor prescribe you antibiotic, it tells you seven days. So you cannot take golden seal like two weeks, three weeks, you have to give it a break. Mm -hmm. So this is just um, some image of some. I prefer the liquid. As a matter of fact, I used to take a combination of both echinacea and golden seal, but I only do it for a week and then stop. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about the good friend of the onion, the garlic, and look at garlic poultice. Now, the garlic poultice is very useful for a head cold, chest congestion, asthma, whooping cough. You can place it on the chest or under the feet, but please remember garlic burns. So you do not make it have direct contact on your skin. So you will put it between some type of something, whether it be napkin or whether it be you know, some type of um, cloth or something, because you do not want it to have direct contact with the skin because it will burn your skin. So here is how we would make it. We would get fresh garlic, two or three cloves. We get our knife, we get our fork and we get a garlic press. We get our cheese cloth or large washcloth or some other thin fabric. And we put it with some olive oil. Okay, because we want to protect our skin. And that is why we don't put plain garlic on the skin. So you crush the garlic using the back of the fork or garlic press or knife. You place the crushed garlic in the middle of the cheese cloth. You apply the olive oil to the bottom of the feet and then apply the poultice. If the garlic touches the sole of the feet, it could blister, right? So after bandaging the feet, put a sock on and this can be left on overnight. So you put your socks on to hold it in place. So we can see here what it looks like, the garlic poultice. That's how what it would look like. And remember now you're putting the olive oil under the feet. This is not having direct contact with the feet and then you put on your socks. Or coconut oil. Mm -hmm. 
And it's also, garlic is also good for arthritis. The same poultice there, you can put it on, but uh, as I said, protect your skin first because it can cause blister. You can put some olive oil, you know, to lessen the blister and stuff so that it does not affect your skin. Our next remedy is the hot foot bath. It's very useful to relieve congestion. And it relieves congestion in other parts of the body, such as the brain, the lungs, or the abdominal organs. It helps equalize the circulation. It induces sweating and a general warming of the body. And it strengthens the immune system as well. It is also useful to reduce fever, prevent or shorten the cold and or flu. If you have a headache, because you're gonna, you want the, the blood to move from the head and come to the limbs, come to the feet. It's also good for chest congestion. It's good to stop nosebleed. It's good to promote relaxation and to relieve menstrual cramps as well. Don't know if anyone has any testimonies, if they have used the foot bath for any of these things. Well, um, the hot foot bath I've used uh, on different occasions with people with high blood pressure. And I've even used it on my job with uh, a coworker who had menstrual cramps. Well, two of them actually, because you know, they're bending over, you know, how it is when you have menstrual cramps, you can't sit straight. And one of the things that I introduced to them was the hot foot bath, because what we are essentially doing, you see all these things that it does, it uh, prevent and not, like the headache, the congestion, the nose bleed and stuff. What you're really doing when you use a hot foot bath is that you're moving the blood from where the congestion is down to your feet. So um, what happens is that blood generally follows warmth. That's the general rule. So when you put your feet well in the water, it moves the blood from the area where it is down to your feet. The important thing that um, I would want you uh, as far to remember is to make sure that you are protecting the heart and the kidneys by wrapping a sheet or a towel or a blanket or something around your torso. Because when the blood starts moving rapidly, you don't want it to move too fast through those organs and affect your heart and your kidneys. So, um, Donna Lee, uh, can I use it by myself at home, the heart football, or do I need help? Oh, you don't need any help, Pastor Daly. <laughs> you just get two basins uh, and put your feet uh, in it, the water as, as hot as you can bear it. But we also caution that diabetics should be careful or not use them at all. Use some other way of addressing your issue because remember, when you're diabetic, you have um, decreased circulation in your feet and you don't, and sensation. So you don't feel as well as regular people. So we don't want you to get burned. So you have to be careful with that. Okay. okay and Sister Donnelly touched on the precautions that are here for the hot foot bath. If a person has loss of sensation in extremities, if a person is paralyzed, unconscious, diabetic, or have poor circulation, caution using the hot foot bath. Now, these are just the list of supplies that you would need to get the hot foot bath done. The hot kettle, pitcher for cold water, the washcloth, bucket deep enough to cover feet up to the ankles, towel, blanket, and sheet. Steps, you would cover the chair with the sheet, fill the bucket or pitcher with ice and two washcloths, get the patient to sit, explain treatment to the patient first. Very, very important. Start with prayer. Always test temperature of the water before immersing feet in basin and test elbow, 
Test with elbow if you do not have a thermometer to see how hot the water is, whether it's between 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, now go back there, Dr. Ephraim. It's very fast. I don't know who can follow. You know, if you want to digest it, folks, if you want to get a, uh, get a picture of that, take it because it may just come in need one of these days. You may just have need for it one of these days. Remember now, God used simple things to do um, extraordinary things, you know, or to give you extraordinary results. When we work in cooperation with him, he used these things that he has made to bring about healing and to bring about health, right? You could move on. Carefully place feet in the warm water for 15 to 20 minutes. Then you add the hot water to bucket. Ask patient if it is too hot. If it is too hot, you add a little cold water. If it's okay, cover patient in sheet from neck down, cover with blanket, and place a cold rag on the forehead. When adding hot water, take feet out of pan or move to one side. Slowly pour water into the basin and swirl with other hand to mix hot water with foot bath. To end, lift feet up from hot water and pour cold water onto it to close the pores. Mm. So this is just a demonstration here so that we can see, see how her feet is placed to one side and see how the um, she's covered and everything. And to make sure that we use the blanket and so on and so forth to cover our abdomen, to protect our main organs. And the cool rag would be placed on the, the forehead as well. There is a, um, there's a question, um, you could go back. It's a question that has been asked in the chat there. While I'm sharing, I can't see the chat. Yeah, so we help you. Was that was that a dry wrap around the torso beside the whole body blanket mentioned here? No, it would be the same thing. Okay. So in this case, now you're actually seeing the whole thing and you're seeing with the rag on the head and everything. So it's here, here. Wow. Any questions? Any questions? Before we go to the next, any questions? Any, any, XP, any, any, any comments? Anything to share from our audience? Well, we have a few uh, comments in the chat uh, and questions too. Uh, uh, Sister Cheryl says it elevates your blood pressure. Uh, what were we talking about at that time? The eucalyptus. I, I think that's what she was talking about. And Sister Angela I think I read Sister, Leanne, Sister Leandra says, do you have the direction for the cabbage poultice, Dr. Ephraim? Next week, we're going to share that. <laughs> That's coming in part two. Part two. Okay. And Sister Angela is telling us where you can get um, food grade essential oils. She said essential wholesale lab sells them. And Sister Marcia says, it's true, Dr. E. I put garlic on my pimple on my body and it burns. And Sister Marcia also said caution should be taken with hot foot bath as one can lose consciousness. Very true. If the head gets too hot, that is why we have the cold rag there mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that you, the brain, you don't heat up the brain too much because when it starts getting hot, it gets hot. And Sister Margaret says was, okay, we answered that already. And Sister Marcia says, wouldn't be better to have someone with the person? Well, yes, 
you you write about that mm -hmm. but if you're there and you want some relief <laughs> right away you're by yourself then um you can do it maybe you can call somebody on the phone and say hey i'm gonna do a hot foot bath if i if you don't hear me um during this conversation again at some point i passed out come check on me <laughs> <laughs> or something and uh who else is in the chat sister susan cold cloth was placed on the head before the feet is placed on the in the hot water okay and leandro oh man can someone secretly send me send it to me need to put it on tonight okay no problem leandro we'll get it to you Okay, and we're looking at steam healing, um, inhalation, and we know that during the COVID time too, a lot of this was being practiced. Now, steam is useful for congestion. You add a few drops of eucalyptus and peppermint oil to a bowl of hot water. You use flannel or wool blankets to cover your head and the rest of your body. Inhale the steamed solution, then clear your nostrils. Then repeat treatment for at least 30 minutes. Remember to splash your face when you're finished with cool water so that you can close your pores after the treatment. Any questions on steam inhalation? No? Okay, so we're pretty much coming to the end of the picture. Hold on. This one? Yes. The steam. Hold on. Thank you. I would really love for everyone, I'd love to recommend this book for everyone. In these last days, everyone needs to have the Natural Remedy Encyclopedia because almost everything that we're saying is in here and it tells you how to use it, the amount to use and so forth. So always make sure you have at least this book in your home. The Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. Yeah, it's good. Like when uh, those special days come around, like birthdays and Christmas and whatever, instead of buying the purses that we're not using anymore, because most of the time we're not going anywhere mm -hmm. and other things, it's good to invest in some of these things so that you know what to do. You can read for yourselves. Right. Lack of knowledge will destroy God's people. So you want to make sure you're getting the right knowledge and information. And if you lack wisdom, you pray and ask God for it. He'll give it to you. Amen. Dr. Ephraim, if the one in Corinthian is there, we'll go down to that one. Move we'll past the psalm, or I'll read it for them. Okay. Don't go. All right. Let us, don't, don't, don't. Well, I don't no, no, have no, no, it no. because remember, this no, all right, is all right. Okay. Yes. All right. No, no, folks. Um, we're going to stop right here for this evening. Uh, the important thing is that how much of these. Uh, remedies you have um, listened to is how many of them you're going to apply. And because um, to know and not to do is not to know. Faith without action is dead. If you know these things, happier you if you do them. So we want to take this slide down right now and we want you to put in the chat what are you taking away from this tonight? Which one of these you think you can use? Anybody, just put which, which one of these natural remedies, put it in the chat there that you think you can use. Okay. Uh, Winsome, it's nice to see you. <laughs> Sister Jennifer, the book, yeah, someone I'm, needs to name. Yeah, I'm putting it in the chat. I'm writing it in the chat. Right. Sister Daly, could you put your number in the chat, please, so that they can contact you if they need one? 
our general assistant. They, they put it there. 516-984-1057. 516-984-1057. Remember now, it doesn't matter what school you have been to, my folks, what degrees you have. Most of the public um, institution will not share these things with you. Also, the Adventist institutions, most of them, you won't get them there anyway. So we have to educate ourselves. That's what we do. We do the gospel medical missionary training. Everybody here did that attend day training. And uh, we have multitude of books that we read. Uh, so we want you to begin to, um, to, to, to really, really educate yourselves. And you know, next year, God's willing, we're going to bring back Mayman Wilson here in Brooklyn. Me and, um, and Dr. Dion Ryan is working on a 10-day advanced natural remedies. I want you guys to save the date, April um, 7th to the 16th, right here in Brooklyn at the Goshen Temple. Uh, we can hold over 400 or something people. So we'll be getting advanced. That separated law will keep us all alive. We have to get ready for the moment in which we live. You know, um, the mark of the beast is soon be upon us. We will not be able to buy ourselves. But by then, um, we have to uh, educate ourselves. We know our end time um, prophetic scenario that um, is painted in the Bible and in the books of um, our prophetess. So, so keep that in mind. But one thing that really impresses me about these simple natural remedies is that when they are used in accordance with God's will and in faith in the divine healer, miraculous things can happen. We have to approach it in faith. You can't just approach it uh, and just, just approach it like that, wishy-washy, thinking it may or may not happen. God said it will happen. We saw what happened to King Hezekiah. He had that terminal boil and he had the figs and God added 15 years to his life. We see the same man in um, John 9 who was born blind from birth. Uh, therefore, now he could not be healed by the medical system then. But guess what he did? Jesus just came to him, told him to wash and put a clay poultice on his eyes. And he left seeing. You see, simple means used in accordance with God's will brings about supernatural results. One of the simplest thing that, um, uh, that has been used for the past 2,000 years to bring about physical, spiritual, and uh, mental and emotional healing is the cross. And I want to, I I want to end by reading 1 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 1 from verse 18. It says here, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved is the power of God. You hear that? For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. God is doing it here by us sharing these simple remedies with you. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the dispute of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? The Corinthians prided themselves in being wise uh, for God, for, uh, for after that, verse 21, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Listen to this now. For the Jews will carry a sign and the Greeks will carry a wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. Now, what does that mean? Now, to the Jews, uh, anyone who dies on a cross is cursed. Uh, or anyone who died on a cross was cursed. So how could we, uh, how could a Christian church be saying that Jesus died on a simple cross? That's symbol of shame and suffering. But that's exactly where he died. And Christ used the preaching of the cross as foolishness to the um, to the um, to the Jews, a stumbling block to the Jews, and foolishness to the Greeks. The Greeks and Romans and all those folks, 
only the worst of known Roman criminals was crucified upon a cross. So when Paul went to preach Jesus died on a cross to the Romans, uh, they couldn't fathom that. That was nuts. That was crazy. How could, how could a criminal, the worst of a criminal, become my savior, become my messiah, become my God? They couldn't believe it. But we preach Christ crucified. But, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the fullness of God is wiser than man, men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So this is not about man's wisdom. This is about the wisdom of God, beloved. So if you are here this evening and you are not yet saved, you have not yet accepted Christ as your personal savior. He just doesn't want you to use his natural remedies to be healed physically. He wants you to come to him and receive the simple gospel, uh, which simple states that Christ died for our sins, was resurrected on the third day, and is interceding for us, and is coming back again. If you put your faith and your confidence in that, you'll be saved from your sins. You'll get a brand new life. Uh, you will live with God forever. Uh, in a place where you will never seek again. As uh, simple as that, believe that Christ died upon the cross, uh, was buried for you, was resurrected on the third day, is interceding for you now in heaven, and is coming back again to take you to his kingdom. This evening, my friends, if you are here and uh, you have not uh, made that decision to put your faith in Christ, I want to encourage you to do so. There's a decision card in the chat just click on it fill that out and the next step after you put your faith in christ is that you need to get baptized for so 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 you can identify with jesus he himself was baptized although he was not a sinful man he set an example for us and we would like to see people who are on the healing of the nation receive total healing physical mental and spiritual and from Christian perspective, the healing come when we place our faith in Christ. Christ will fill us with his Holy Spirit. So if you're here this evening, we want you to make that decision. You could raise your hands. We'll take you in the chat, the team, and we will pray with you and study the gospel with you and, um, and baptize you anywhere you are in this world in the name of Jesus. So let us pray. Father, we're thankful for these simple natural remedies that has such powerful, powerful um, effect when we use them in accordance with your will and when we use them in faith. But we realize that the remedies of all remedies is Jesus, the one who died on the cross uh, to save us from our sins. No matter how healthy we are today, we're going to die anyway. The death, the, the death rate is still one per person. But that's not the end for those who put themselves or their faith in Jesus Christ. He will come again and resurrect us to a, and take us to a land where we will never die. I pray that everyone who uh, comes to this program tonight will receive Jesus and he will give us the spirit who will give us wisdom and strength to apply these remedies. Thank you for hearing our prayers and for saving us, bringing us next week when we'll have part two of Natural Remedies for Common Ailment. Thank you for all our presenters. Faithful week after week, preparing ourselves to be used by you. Thank you for hearing us now and for healing us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. I just want to remind everyone also that tomorrow there will be no Bible study due to a graduation that we'll be having. No Bible study tomorrow at 5.30 because we'll be having the advanced Bible, Elf and Bible students that was trained earlier this year, graduation tomorrow. Two o'clock, all right. So we're looking for our Health Bible um, educators. Can we train to take this message to the world? Thank you very much. And fill out uh, that form. There's a hand up, Mir Sister Muriel, did you want to say something? It was up from a long time. Okay. We, we answered her. All right, let me know. No, I don't think I'd ever take it down. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Have a blessed week, everyone. It was a pleasure, and we hope to see you next week. Okay. Thank you for coming, guys. See you on Healing of the Nation on Wednesday night to get your recharge up. Are we going into prep? Yes. The tech team can maybe play something. Brother Errol, you can put on something or show the flyers, please promote the flyers. You can talk to the folks if you want.